Here we are. Good morning to you. And um, let's look at uh, Matters Nigeria. And this time, let's cross over to uh, Anambra State. Uh, Anambra State, where Governor Charles Chukuma Soludo is the governor. He's in charge. And um, there, 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 there have been some uh, sort of uh, events. Uh, everything is sort of now keyed for 2025. And uh, I have been hearing, maybe you have as well, that uh, there's no competition for 2025. There's, there's no, it's, it's almost like a, a walkover. Uh, but not so is what opposition are saying. Say, how do you mean? Okay, we'll, we'll find out what exactly is uh, going on in Anambra State where Governor Charles Chukuma Soludo has been holding sway. Our guest this morning is Dr. Alex Obiobolu, uh, who is a special advisor to Governor, um, to Governor Soludo on political matters. A fine morning to you, Dr. Alex Obiobolu. Did I say that right? Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, now, uh, very interesting in politics uh, because there will be, you know, uh, those who are in charge and there also will be opposition. And so, uh, whereas I have heard from your camp that come 2025, there's no, there's no issue. It's Soludo will roll over again. Uh, the opposition has said, how can anybody speak like that? That, um, of course, everybody who knows anything about what's going on in Anambra State uh, knows that um, what we need is a change, and that change is going to be coming. Um, okay, but before you come in on that, I, want, I remember that about three weeks or so ago, a group of all the political parties who, of course, by saying all the political parties, they weren't uh, necessarily members of uh, All Progressive uh, Grand Alliance, the party in power uh, in Anambra. Um, they say they have come together to form something called Soludo Ambassadors. So you can see that these are conflicting kind of uh, signals for somebody who doesn't know what's going on in the politics of Anambra. Maybe you can sort of sort it out for us. Well, following, good morning once again. Uh, Thank you. What's happening in Anambra is a lot of buzz of activities. I mean, what going on, about 400 kilometers of road going, the youth have been empowered. We're dealing with the security. We're dealing with the major source of problem to businessmen in Anambra that makes it difficult for businessmen to thrive in Anambra, which is the Aboro, in quotes. That's the term for touts and the harassment. And we have also done a lot on that, dealing with them. We set up what's called the SASA, which is the anti-touting group. And a lot, if you come into Onicha today, which is the gateway of the Southeast, you'll see that uh, there's camp, and people are going about freely, unmolested, unlike before. Okay. Now, let me just put it together. Okay, sure. You know, because uh, uh, if, it, if you will, go, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Alex, Dr. Alex, if you will, could you sort of recap on that whole uh, matter of um, um, Soludo ambassadors made up of membership of... That's what I was going to do. Okay. So three weeks ago, a group of persons who came together and said, listen, even though we don't belong to your ABGA, we like the person of Professor Charles Kuma Soludo, we like what he's doing, we like the fact that... Uh, for a long time, we haven't seen this kind of developmental politics in the state, where you know development is going on on all facets of the site, in education, you know, in health, healthcare. We have 326 primary healthcare centers that have been fully refurbished and been sent to the secondary health sector, where you now have telemedicine, where doctors can see patients in the primary healthcare centers on a certain day using telemedicine. Now. You see the general hospitals being refurbished, being rearmed with equipment, modern day equipment in medical field. Now, this is what these young people all came together and said, this, this is great. It's never happened before. You look at the roads, there was a road uh, breakdown, total collapse in the previous regime. And you see us today, 360 something kilometers already being acted upon. And that 30 something kilometers have just been awarded. So they came together and said, listen, it's never happened before. It's never happened so good. In the first two years, I want to remind you that March next year, we'll be celebrating two years of the Soludo administration and already there's a solution to everything. 
In education, you see the 5,000 teachers that were recruited and pumped into the mission schools and also the public schools. And now we're recruiting under 3,000 this week into the primary and secondary schools. And then to alleviate the suffering of Nigerians, as part of the palliative, the state government decreed total free education in public primary schools and junior secondary schools. That means not a dime will be collected for any reason, not exam fees, not uniforms, nothing. And this has been implemented. And that relieves a lot of parents who either to paid about 15 to 20,000 per 10, now they are paying zilch, nothing. And apart from it, we are refurbishing schools this season. The primary schools are being refurbished. And then, of course, uh, smart schools are being implemented. So with this kind of thing happening in education, in the health sector, pre antenatal to relieve parents, you see pregnant women giving testimony that they didn't believe you could have free antenatal and food delivery services in the state. All this right. will help bring down the under five mortality, bring down the maternal mortality rate, and you can see the results going on. Okay. So in terms of law and order, you can see what we're able to do with the security. So these are the things these young people came over, 2,000 of them came together and said, hey guys, we want to support your government. We don't want to be part of uh, APGA, but we want to support your government. Okay, well, uh, indeed, that, that seems very, very uh, encouraging. Um, because um, in the report that I read, uh, uh, PDP, one of the opposition parties, uh, was, was part of that um, coming together. Uh, but then, uh, in most recent times, uh, they have been, uh, to use the words of press headlines, slamming uh, Soludo uh, and APGA over the assertion and commentary that APGA, I mean, Anambra belongs to APGA. They, of course, they are, they're taking exception to that. Now, um, don't you think that's a bit optimistic to say that Anambra belongs to APGA? That would seem to indicate that uh, or suggest that, you know, it's been locked down and that the people would not look at any option uh, beyond uh, uh, APGA. PDP has taken serious exception to that and said that could not be further from the truth. What would be your commentary to them? Well, if there was any political party that would even oppose that assertion, it shouldn't be PDP, <laughs> because PDP is virtually obliterated in the state. I mean, in the last elections, even though PDP is the national party, they won no seat in the federal house, none. You know, of course, in the state house of assembly, they won four, and uh, one of them has joined a party and now is the speaker of the state assembly. So. What is happening is that people are beginning to see that years they've spent in these national parties have brought nothing to the state. And we all want at the end of the day that Indian numbers should be the winners, no matter the political party in power, and Indian numbers should be the winners. And unfortunately for them, APGA continues to provide that platform that makes and enables Indian Ambra to always end up the winner. I'll give you, when you have a party that has stayed in government, at the helm of government, for 18 years. How do you then say that it's not a statement of fact when they say that Anambra or that state is Abga land? I mean, that is for us to say it's a statement of fact. That does not be shared the fact that man proposes, God disposes. God has a final, a final arbiter. But the statement of fact still remains that Abga has continued to govern Anambra state. And that is because the people of Anambra believe in the spirit of Abga. They believe in Oya Yanawanye, no one is left behind. That is the slogan of the party. That is the party founded by the late uh, Odumegu Ojuku and so many other prominent Igbo leaders like uh, Okadibu. And those of us who find ourselves by faith, by God's divine intervention, to be holding the helm of leadership in this party. We want to continue to ask, meet the aspirations of our people while meeting the aspirations of the founders of this party. And I cannot therefore imagine why they will be opposing. I mean, 2025 will decide again. But like we said, Professor Charles Rondo applied for this job. Indian Ambra interviewed him, found him worthy of this job. And so far, they're very happy with him. Well, and there's so many things going on, so many things going on in the state. Indeed. We uh, want to, 
Metanambra a livable and prosperous state. We want to make it a destination of choice. Okay. Not uh, a departure line where people are leaving the state for. Okay. Um, again, looking at the reports, it is uh, considered that um, uh, the uh, volume, value of trade in the markets uh, in Onitia is in excess of 3 billion naira. I beg your pardon, dollars. 3 billion dollars. And this, apart from the assertion from your very good self, your, your, your administration, that um, you're not even operating at uh, maximum uh, potential. And, um, but sadly, a large proportion of this, of, of this uh, value that we're talking about is not through the banking channels. Could you explain that and what is being done? Because um, Governor Soludo, being a former central bank governor, this will be very, very uh, important to him. When it is said that the value of up to $3 billion uh, dollars, uh, in, 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 in the Onitsha axis is not through banked channels, it, it does, th does that hamper uh, developmental efforts in, in some way? Well, yes, in terms of collection of tax, it does hamper. But I want to tell you that, you know, Nigeria today, there's a lot of informal sector trading going on and businesses. A lot of money is in the informal sector. And Anambra is not different from it. But what you have to acknowledge is the fact that while the government wants to collect tax, government also wants the prosperity of the citizens, that the citizens prosper. And what the government is trying to do is to lay the foundation that enables the confidence building of the citizens in the formal uh, channels, like the banks and the rest of them. But again, in as much as it's in the informal sector, a large is still in the formal sector, because you need to look at the number of branches, banks that have branches in Anambra state. That would tell you that maybe second to Lagos and maybe Portacot, I don't have the figures here, but we remain one of the top places where the banks operate in Nigeria. Now, what the government is trying to do also is to listen, let's go from consumptive commerce to productive and export. We want to be able to produce at home and export abroad, both in our human capital and also in the fiscal resources. So we, the government is planning a, an export period. There's already an industrial layout that has been, uh, has been developed or is ongoing right now at Obo, Oboji in Anambra State. You have the export period going to be part of that. We have the commercial wholesale industry in our back. These places are being promoted by government, developed by government to enable our businessmen to be able to prosper and do business flawlessly. Now, in terms of human capital, you see we have the Solution Innovation District. The plan is to arm our young people with modern day technology and skills that will make them exportable abroad and also the number one destination for information technology in Nigeria. We've done 20,000 persons have been trained on these digital skills. We have about 7,000 now going on the next stream of development in terms of web stack development. Now we have at the same time also trained 5,000 youths. In fact, those who just graduated were 4,118 about a month ago who were given various sums of money to start their own businesses. What we did was we opened up a portal, these young people applied, we shortlisted 5,000 of them, and they did a workshop orientation that orientated them to what government wanted to do. And then they went into the next stage of training using the one boy um, model, where they trained under master trainers between four months to six months. After that, they had entrepreneurial training using the NDI, the EDI, with the University of uh, Nandaxco University as the trainer. And they had certification, which is CBN affiliated certificate on entrepreneurship. After that, they were now given this money to go in and become successful people. I hope it's to build billionaires. Now, on the other scale, in terms of farming, agriculture, we distributed 1 million students to various household families. Our target is to empower 500,000 households that we can lead them from poverty line 
And we expect that at the end of the day, each family should be able to raise, once this fruit starts fruiting, palm oil and coconut seedlings, once they start fruiting, we expect each family to go home with about 1.2 million annually in terms of income. And that is a great deal. 100,000 per month for an average family. That has taken them away from poverty. So these are the kind of things the government is doing to develop human capital and make Anambra a destination of choice. Hmm. Um, indeed, it, it, it's, it's, it, it sounds very, very, um, uh, very, very good, very encouraging. Um, but as you know, uh, security is very, very important as well. Um, you, you spoke yeah. about, um, I, I, think, um, I think you've touched on the whole matter of touts uh, uh, in Anambra. And I think work is in progress to sort of found, uh, find, an, uh, first of all, to show that there's no welcome for people who just want to tout on the wealth or potential wealth of Anambra and that efforts are being made to find those of them that are willing uh, some sort of uh, alternative. But between the touts and um, insecurity in the state, uh, tell me about um, the Soludo administration's efforts in, in that regard to make um, Anambra uh, safe for people to visit, come and do business in, and generally, uh, it maybe even tourism. Okay, when the administration assumed office, the first thing on March 17th, it did was to hold a security meeting. Before March 17th, 2022, we know that over nine local governments were having issues with security. They were what we call your non government. They had taken over these nine local governments, seven of them in the south. And what he did was to engage them first peaceably, appeal to them while we set up the security network by which we we're going to engage them. What they did was, in conjunction with the Federal security agencies, the Army, the Navy, and the state agencies, a strike force of about 250 men strike force was developed to combat these people. And within six months, we were able to deal with this. Most of the leaders were neutralized. Most are today going through the justice system. And what we did was to deal with that. Now, when you look at security threats that the state faces today, there are three categories. One, the non-state actors who have declared themselves ungovernable that say they are a non-government. Two, those who dwell in kidnapping for ransom and murder. Three, those who decide to dispossess innocent people instances of their wealth using touting system, abroad aggressive. They will lay you on the road and stop you and take your possessions. Now we'll be able to deal with the non government. As a matter of fact, they are non existent in the state now. What you have now is the remnants of those who are involved in kidnapping. And the state has been able to identify areas they have them where they go, they come into the urban, strike, kidnap, and move, and move to the edge of the uh, state in the Orumba North, which is a border local government with. Enugu State and um, Abia State. Okay, welcome back. Our guest is Dr. Alex Obiobolu, uh, who is the special advisor to Governor Chukuma Charles Suludo of uh, Anambra State. He's uh, the advisor, uh, senior, uh, uh, the special advisor on political uh, matters. And he's been telling us why, um, well, he's been giving us an account of the stewardship uh, of uh, the governor, and I've asked him a number of questions. Um, you know, uh, guests have, I mean, viewers have been wanting to call in. So let me start off with um, um, Ma, uh, Ma Zio Korafo. Is, are you on? Yes, I'm on from Arutuku in Abia State. Very good, sir. Good morning to you. Go right good ahead. Morning, What's your morning, question sir. or contribution? Yeah, good morning, uh, sir. Good morning, our guests. Yes, I uh, went. First of all, let me congratulate the governor and my brother to the studio, at least, Pastor Amitya. Now, the governor has tried, at least, for solving, solving that problem of that, uh, in some, in some, uh, that, uh, that is, at least, the way he handled it is what he called the job of a technocrat, an educated young governor, at least. He tried in handling that case. That is number one. And number two, the governor should try as much as possible. This issue of sit at home issue is what is still okay. angry, which is not good. They should find a solution, uh, have to bring a last solution. And he has tried to, the education, this one is get 
we will not call it scholarship. Not, I'm not, I will not call it a scholarship. At least he followed the constitution of the Central Republic of Nigeria. That a child from secondary school, you have, whether you are from Igbo, Europe, outside, no matter your class, that you are qualified to go to school in Anambra State, free of charge. That is it. It's a way to promote package, which I want other governors from other certified states to Abuja to borrow or to copy. I agree that the current is what to do with education at least. Any child who doesn't want to go to that is own business. Any father who doesn't want to send his child to go to school, that is own business. I think the government said, I did to uh, uh, Niger Bridge. Other speaking, the way of uh, this abracadabra, pickpocket, this and that, is very, very alarming. Government should find a lasting solution. It's not, it's very, very embarrassing. You finish your day, you're trying to cross that bridge. You see all this before, before you talk that Robinson. You have collected whatever you have and sit at home. Honestly speaking, we want a lasting solution to it now or never. Good morning, my brother. I think it's still a greeting to the government and uh, Yaji CK. God bless him and everybody. Good morning, sir. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okorovo. Dr. Alex Obiobolu, um, what would be your re re rejoinder to that? Um, he General commendation, but this whole matter of sit at home, is it an intractable uh, problem? Okay, I believe yes, that was... Um, can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Did you hear my question? Okay. Yes, I had a question. Okay, go ahead, please. Well, you know, the sit at home uh, security is good, but there's what they call the perceptive angle. The citizen must feel safe. And um, that is what we are working on. Because over time, once they see that these incidences of uh, criminality have reduced and at various minima, you will see people begin to move. Well, I'll tell you something. In Anamba State today, honestly, you need to come visit. There is free movement on Mondays. People move around on Mondays. The only issue is that the banks have not opened and the markets are not open. The big markets, small markets are open. If you go to the villages, the urban areas, the small markets, the food vegetable markets are open on Mondays. It's just that the big markets are not open. And that is because of the leadership of those markets. And what the government is trying to do is not to do this top to bottom approach where you give orders and they must be obeyed. We want them to take their time and understand that this thing has come to stay, that there's security and that the state is no longer in bed, are no longer under the siege of these young criminals that thought that they were the government on their own. So that is what I'll tell you. Okay. As, as it comes to Anambra, he'll see a free movement of people. Okay. Way. Now, an another feature of Anamba, it just occurred to me that um, also uh, is going to uh, needs addressing, and uh, I can sort of ask you on a progress report on that, is this whole matter of um, soil erosion. Um, it, it has been devastating in some areas. Um, it, what are the possibilities? Is, is this a natural phenomenon that you can't do uh, very much, if anything, uh, about? Or what efforts have been expended in that direction? of stemming the, the, the challenge of uh, uh, soil erosion in Anambra? Well, the problem about erosion is uh, not man-made. This is what we find because of the soil type we have in Anambra. And it's been a big problem. It's continued to take over uh, arable land. And of course, remember that Anambra State is Comparable to Lagos, we are the smallest states in Nigeria, and we have the highest population density. And the erosion itself is further driving us into high density, high density population. Now, when you look at the way buildings are erected in Anambra, you see four, five-story buildings, which are in demand. It's because of the small area, size area we have in the state. So what we've done is to deal with erosion are two types: the preventive, where Tree planting, education is necessary. That the government has been doing. But in terms of dealing with it, you know, it's so cost consuming that we need the federal government presence. And that is why the governor invited the minister, even the previous administration, has continued to appeal to the federal government to come to our aid. Because you having landslides with erosion, it's consuming roads, I mean, cutting off roads, 
the road infrastructure is also going on there. And of course, people's homes, livelihoods, farms are being lost to these solutions. And it's a work in progress. We continue to appeal to the federal government to come in and see how they can help to deal with these things. Okay. We have the ecological fund, which is a federal government intervention fund. And what we are appealing is that we should be able to get these ecological funds to help us in our states. Okay. Let me bring on Chidi, who has called in from Kapanchan. Good morning, Chidi. Good morning, Chief Yuri. Thank you for calling in, sir. Good morning to your guest as well. Okay. Yes, I wish to morning, commend Chidi. Professor Charles Toludo on his good stewardship to the people of Anambra State since his inception as the governor of the state. And I also remember that at the time he took over effectively as the governor of the state, he made moves to ensure that Nande Kano, a Nigerian citizen who has been in custody over the years, was released. I want to remind him and encourage him to walk in line with other southeastern governors and every other stakeholder in the Project Nigeria to ensure that Nandekano is released as quickly as possible. I strongly want to believe that if Nandekano is unconditionally released, a lot of peace that we are looking for will come the way of Nigeria and particularly Anambra State. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chidi. Uh, would you like to uh, comment on that? It was, a, it was an issue that was going to come up inevitably. Well, what would be your response to that? Yes, Chidi spoke the mind of Ndigo. He spoke in the mind of our governor. Our governor had, as far back as 2022, um, rather 2023 this year in January, made that remark, public demand for the release of Unam Dikanu. Remember before then, they had visited him in detention, they had spoken with him, they had exchanged ideas, and he came out and started dealing with those ideas. That was part of how he was able to combat the insecurity of the non-government. Because Namikano denounced them, said they did not represent what he represented, and did not represent the wish of an evil man. So what has been happening since then is a lot of backhouse dealing. You know, the governor is not making noise about it. He's getting to the right sources. He's also engaging his colleagues the southeast, and also his colleagues in other states, uh, parts of Nigeria, because it's a collective thing. You know, whatever is a problem is your problem. And that is the way he continues to push that message. And we are very optimistic that in the near future, very near future, the President of the uh, Republic of Nigeria will hack into our appeals, because that appeal has been directed to the President of the country. In constitution, where we are with the courts, the courts have asked that he be released, and he's still been held. Okay, now again, let me just return to the whole matter of infrastructure and uh, its role in uh, development. Um, I think some high ranking official uh, from Anambra was speaking recently and was you know, comparing. You know, first of all, you've spoken to us about it being the second smallest uh, uh, state in the country, and he sort of related that to uh, Lagos. And as you know, Lagos is making strides, such as Anambra itself uh, intends to make. And we, he has spoken about rail. Uh, a rail, and uh, th th this is something that um, Anambra itself has its eye on in the, is it ongoing or is it a, a very short-term kind of a plan? Um, talk to me about uh, that because um, there's every, uh, from what I'm reading, there's every intention to take Anambra also into a 21st century uh, state and economy. Yeah, just like... Um what we're doing in various sectors, in terms of transportation, we're trying to make sure that we have the best uh, infrastructure in place that will take care of the next 50 years. Because, you know, Anambra has a 2070 plan. And part of our plan is that in the next, by 2070, Anambra will have been the industrial capital of Nigeria. Anambra will be the economic hub of Nigeria, overtaking Lagos. And in doing that, we need infrastructure, especially in terms of transport. So whilst we're looking at the road infrastructure, we're building on it, we're also preparing the rail infrastructure. A feasibility study was done that said it was feasible, and right now, government is looking at how to put this in place. 
We're looking at the cost. We're looking at the route. And we're looking at the different lines. And also how to make this sustainable and profitable for the government. So these are things one is, uh, the government is looking at right now. And again, when you look at the infrastructure, we're looking at water, water transportation. Already, government has procured uh, water vessels that will be able to commute uh, uh, farmers and residents in the hinterland who live along the river, especially from uh, Ugupele or Somala, all the way to Opala and Odepe in Anambra West. So that is what government is also doing. So these things are in place. We want to have an integrated transport system that involves rail, road, and water. Indeed. Um, now, every, every state has its own, I would imagine. But talk to me a, a bit about um, the um, uh, Okpoko, uh, shall we call it, and uh, the slum, the uh, suburb uh, uh, slum uh, that exists in there. Um, I, I know the attention of government must be on it, but... Um, Sort of give us a progress report uh, because it seems to be a very, very bad situation. Well, Opoko is a work in progress. And um, the interesting thing about it, and it's nice to note that even the citizens are appreciating what government is doing. What the government was trying to do was do three in one deal with insecurity, deal with environment, and be able to integrate, reintegrate these persons back into the mainstream of the society. Because it was really a slum. And there was no road infrastructure. There was no toilet facility, no sanitation. Mm -hmm. There was no light. So what we've done now is we've opened up with 14.9 kilometers of road. We've also, for the first time, they're receiving health service. There's a general hospital that has been, as I'm talking to you now, is ongoing, a general hospital. Of course, all the uh, 16 primary healthcare centers within that local government is also being refurbished right now with solar power to power the equipment in the healthcare system, uh, the healthcare center, with also water boreholes have been sunk there. And government has just also approved for water reticulation in Opoko. So we are building a, a system, water system for them okay. that will be reticulated around the whole place. Because and also there is an entertainment system we are building a sports center for them, a recreational sports center for them. Okay. okay. So these are the three major things we've done now, the hospital, the water, and the recreational center. Uh, and, and Okay, I imagine that will be addressing the um, air pollution issue there too, which is said to be off the charts. But um, let me not uh, keep uh, Charles in me now, waiting any longer. Um, uh, in spite of those efforts, I still lost um, Charles, who had called in from Mina. But I was saying that... Um, the air pollution uh, in, in Opoko uh, it was, is said to be off the chart, so much so that it is being uh, reported even from across Nigerian borders uh, in the West. So I, I guess what you spoke about would also encompass uh, efforts in that direction as well. Well, the Ministry of Environment, in fact, uh, this morning, the House of Assembly, the new law on that has just been read, the first reading in the House of Assembly. The government has sent in an executive bill that wants to address holistically all the issues we have with the environment in terms of erosion, in terms of air pollution, water pollution, sanitation, and then, of course, protecting our uh, drainage systems. So that's a comprehensive bill that has just been read for the first time in the House of Assembly today, this morning. Well, all that you've been speaking to us about, um, it seems to me that whoever wants to come in there, I mean, the governor is incumbent, he's, you know, ready to, to work at it. In fact, he wants more time at it if the electorate, if the electorate will give it to him. But um, with um, opposition uh, parties saying that um, they still see uh, much more, they, they still see much more to do. I guess that is the way it is. It doesn't matter how much has been done. Uh, which that has been done, opposition will say that, um, uh, you know, there's more to be done. Now, you are not opposition to yourselves. Uh, could I ask you then, in closing, uh, what are the areas that Governor Soludo um, has penned down for attention, but since all things can't be done at once, um, that people should look forward to in terms of progress and development in Anambra? Well, well you see... Uh 
The issue, the truth about it is that you can't finish all the work. There's so much work as you solve one, new problems emerge. That's the truth. The second one is the fact that the government has focused on its pipe pillars, law and other infrastructure, which we're handling in terms of economic uh, indicators, giving our people the economic uh, largesse and support to be able to be better for themselves, to do better for themselves. Now, these things have been done in the first two years of his administration. And he will tell you that he's, he's a tenure with a deadline. We have four years. We're not talking about uh, re-election. We have four years, we made promises, and we are ticking off on each promise we made and making sure it works. Like I'll give you next year, there's a plan to make compulsory. Every child must have compulsory education. What does it mean? It means that if you don't put your child in school, you've committed a crime. Sorry. Sorry. Next year, we want to do uh, where philanthropists, good nurtured men, good hearted men, can take over schools. They can take over schools and manage schools. So it's not just government alone. The public can also come in. The private sector can also come in and help. But the essence is that it must be free education in our public schools, primary and junior secondary. Now, these are plans. You can see in terms of uh, entertainment, we want to make it a livable place where you can come in and enjoy. We have what you call the solution funds that we hope to deliver by December of next year, fully functional where you have a water park, you have a country house, you have a, 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 a amusement park, where people can come in and relax. In Oka, in the center of the city. Of course, we also want to develop a five-star hotel. So these are things, because with the five-star hotel and the international conference center, we have an airport. Of course, you know that Anambra will now become a destination of choice, where people come to hold conferences all over from the country, they come and try, because then we'll have had a secure state and we'll have a state where you can come in and have a good time while mm. doing business. And, and so they... these are things that we're putting in. It's a four-year project. After four years, we can go back and apply. And we believe that our handwork, what we have set out, the outcome of what we've set out, will be enough to get us under four years. And, and speaking about the airport, um, I, I believe it was named after uh, the illustrious Nigerian Chinua. author uh, Chinua Achebe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is correct. Yes, because um, it was said at the time that, um, quite frankly, no matter how hard you sort of search, uh, nobody is as deserving, especially that you have somebody from in India, Nambra Stock, uh, for that honor. Uh, the airport. In fact, there's also uh, an effort to, I think you, you, you're inviting the federal government in to work on the international aspect of its name, uh, because it's the uh, Chinua yes. Achebe International mm -hmm. uh, Airport <laughs> for both cargo and passenger, if I'm right. Yes. Yes, correct. And is the federal government, um, are they uh, encouraging? Are they, you know, uh, have they shown interest? Uh, that you have? The state government through the Ministry of Transport has been engaging them and uh, the engagement is ongoing and is bearing fruit and we're very hopeful that at the end of the day we will be able to meet all that is required to make it an international cargo and passenger airport. Indeed. Uh, has it started, uh, just in closing, has it started, I mean, can, can, can people actually land there or is this a work still in progress? People have been landing. Okay. Okay. Even before the president had decision. It was mm -hmm. sometime in late uh, uh, 2021 that the first aircraft it was an airpiece passenger. Mm -hmm. aircraft My bad. landed there. M My bad. I, I should have, I should have and known better. So, so I can actually plane. fly into uh, Anambra now. Uh, yes. Although. Abuja, Lagos flights are there right now. Indeed. I, I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, Dr. Alex uh, uh, for coming in. Dr. Uh, Alex, thank you very much for coming on. You know, and I wish you all the best. Okay, so that's our, that's our program today. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, so that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Iori Folari. Bye-bye for now.